Shalom to Rabbi Yoel Schoenfeld, Queens, New York. Yoni, how are you? Fine, Baruch Hashem. So, first of all, please, a few words about your community. The, our community in, in Kew Gardens Hills, New York, is this is a community that's uh, been growing since the 1950s, early 1950s. Um, truthfully, the Kehillah of Kew Gardens Hills is something my father started in 1950, 1951 is when the shul opened. And it, it was drawing from people from East New York, Brownsville, Crown Heights, Williamsburg, which were communities in and around Brooklyn, and people were looking to migrate to come uh, somewhere else to get that type it was like known as the country. It was the suburbs. And so people came here and then uh, it was just a, a small little shul in a basement, 12 people. There was a conservative temple, but then this Orthodox temple developed into today what's about 450 and its peak was about almost uh, five, 600 people. And um, it's, uh, it's, you go along the main street in, in our neighborhood and there are, I remember there was one pizza shop that opened, but that was big news. There was one butcher shop that we had that was big news. And now every third, third store is a pizza shop or a restaurant, a dairy restaurant, a basari restaurant. Uh, there are all, all the clothing stores are even owned by Shomer Shabbos. You walk along Main Street on Shabbos, the whole Main Street, everything is closed. Uh, we have yeshivas, uh, yeshivas katanas, gedolos. We have uh, the Chaim yeshiva here, or Orochaim yeshiva here. And the buildings are beautiful, and the yeshivas are beautiful, and the boys are beautiful. We have a wonderful base. Yaakov, we have a wonderful uh, Yeshiva Central Queens, boys and girls. It's a uh, it's it's a very mixed Kehillah. We have Bukharans, Sephardim, Ashkenazim, not too many Hasidim yet, and uh, we have a, a mikvah, an Erev. It's it's Chutz Laaretz, but uh, it's I guess you could say it's about as good as it gets in Chutz Laaretz. Now, personally speaking, Rabbi Schoenfeld, what does it mean really uh, for you to lead a community these days? To be at the head of a kahila is, uh, in, if, if I'm talking, of course, to be a spiritual head as a rabbi, uh, is a very daunting uh, challenge. It's very rewarding because you, you're able to teach Torah and you're able to spread the word of Torah. You're able to have lectures arranged for others to speak. It's, in that way, it's wonderful. And of course, all the spiritual needs of the community are addressed. But on the other hand, it's very challenging because there are always political challenges. There are always obstacles thrown in your way. You also have to navigate difficult issues between members of the Kehillah and Balabatham of your own Kehillah versus Balabatham of others. So it, it, it can be a problem, but uh, it's a challenge. And Baruch Hashem, the Rabbanim here that I work with, certainly I would say most, if not all, we rise to the challenge and it's, it's extremely uh, rewarding. Now, in terms of the community itself, how would you define the challenges, the challenges of the members of the community? Look, the, every Rav and every Kehillah has to deal with his, the usual issues of Shalom bias, um, of, of maintaining the Shalom bias amongst married people, Shalom bias in the community. Uh, we have to maintain our contacts with the politicians. It's something that's just necessary to do. Uh, we have to maintain a good relationship with the police, with the fire department even. Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge, but it's a wonderful challenge. And I, uh, I think uh, that we have met with that uh, quite well. But, you know, like every community, something all of a sudden is thrown at new. We have a Vada Rabbanim in, uh, in Queens, which is unlike almost any other Vada Rabbanim uh, in the United States, in that we ha it's not just a, a name only, but it is a Vad Harabanim. That means the Rabbanim are actively involved in our Vad. We meet on a regular basis. Yes, we have a paid executive director. Yes, we have paid Mashkichim. But the Rabbanim of the Kehillah, who don't get paid anything, as we like to say, uh, the uh, the 10 cents that we spend on an aspirin comes out of our pocket for the headaches that we have to deal with. And sometimes there are politics with uh, Vadim from outside the area uh, that try to encroach. And we try to maintain our our independence here of all the other Vad. And we try to make this a Vad of Queens. We don't go out to any other neighborhood, and we expect other Vadim not to come into our neighborhood and it's you know those those kind of headaches that we have to deal with it's not so easy but um, I think we've 
we've done a pretty good job. And uh, thankfully, we are, as a Vata Rabbanim, uh, we've been quite well respected. Now, when we talk about anti Semitism, we, of course, uh, mainly are relating to what's going on in Europe, but there are incidents, there are things going on in America. Uh, what could you tell us about what you are feeling, if anything, in terms of anti-Semitism? I cannot say yes. You always hear in there you'll have some idiot spray painting a swastika or spelling uh, the Jews, uh, you know, J U Z J U Z E, and Jews go, you know, go back to Palestine. But that's really rare. Um, we do have a Muslim community here. So far, B'liayin Hara, Bar Hashem, uh, it's been quiet. Uh, Naturally, we have to keep our guard, uh, but so far it has been quiet with the Muslims. Unfortunately, to tell you the truth, um, you, we've had situations where non-Orthodox temples have closed, and instead of choosing to sell their synagogues to Jewish Orthodox uh, synagogues or schools, uh, they've chosen instead to sell to, mu to sell to Muslims. Very, very sad. Very unfortunate. And uh, but it's been quiet. And uh, the fact that we have a good relationship with the politicians, with the police, is very helpful. So here and there. It There'll be a little skirmish, it'll be a little incident, but I can't say, thank God, Baruch Hashem, I cannot say that it's an overriding problem, at least not here in this little pocket of Kew Gardens Hills. And so if and when there are incidents, anti-Semitic incidents, how should and how do you deal with it? How do we deal with anti-Semitism? It's, it's done very discreetly. Let, let's I'll tell you, for example, um, there's a big park a city-run park right here between Kew Gardens Hills and Forest Hills. Anybody in Queens has heard of this. It's called Flushing Meadow Park. That's where the World's Fair was held in 1939 and 1964 5. Uh, it, today it's a big lake with basketball courts and little uh, trails around the lake. And uh, someone noticed from my shul that around all around the, the lampposts in this park, all around them, uh, been saying, stop apartheid, support BDS. Stop apartheid, support BDS. And we all know what BDS means. BDS means uh, 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 boycott, divest, and sanction against Israel. Clearly anti-Semitic, although unfortunately it's true there are many Jews involved uh, in that effort, but for the most part it's, uh, it's raw anti-Semitism. So uh, we've worked with the police on that. They have uh, gone around, and the Department of Parks, uh, they have gone around to these lampposts and just on their, on their own, have been spray painting back the lampposts to the original color and on park benches. Um, so th that's been addressed. It has not ended because when they spray paint, the vandals come back and spray paint all over again. Um, so, but what I am trying to say is that whatever incidents we have, we've been dealing, and it's very important to have a good relationship with the politicians, and we do. And uh, the police, the politicians, the parks department, and uh, so it's it's been the lid on anti-Semitism uh, has been kept uh, pretty much closed. And when something pops up, we're able to suppress it and push it down. So it's 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 been it's been good. I cannot complain uh, for a community in Chutzlar. It's right now. Uh, I cannot complain. It's, it's being addressed and addressed properly. So Pesach, Passover is coming. How are the preparations? Well, Pesach uh, and this community of Kew Gardens Hills, uh, if you come, like with the week of Pesach, people are going shopping, doing, buying pots, pans, going to all the grocery stores, and one grocery store after the other grocery store is as the people coming, going, by finding deals on matzahs, and the, you know, the horns are blaring because people are looking for parking spots. Uh, that's all, you know, era of Pesach as the, as the uh, Pesach builds. Um, and of course, many people, uh, it's the new uh, exodus, the new Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, as we leave here and go to Florida, we leave here and we go to all kind of hotels. That's a, another discussion which uh, I have very strong feelings about, the hotel phenomenon, and um, maybe that'll lead out for some other discussion. I've written about it. I, th I think it's a very sad development that so many people go to hotels, they rob Pesach of, of, uh, of its beauty. But uh, here, here in Kew Gardens Hills, there's a beautiful festive atmosphere atmosphere and uh, it's it me personally it's, it's my favorite yanta for the whole year and you get the family together the children together there's just nothing like it it's it's a beautiful hug now another issue is of course aliyah immigration to israel 
How do you see the issue of Aliyah as it is uh, related to, as it the attitude towards Aliyah amongst the young generation? Now, the young generation, I'm only going to speak for this community of Kew Gardens Hills as far as whether they put Aliyah to Israel uh, on the top burner. It's a uh, thorn in my side that uh, Zionism, and I'm not talking about Zionism from the, the Herzl Zionism, not even the, the, the religious Mizrahi Zionism, but all the political Zionism on the side. I'm talking about just the discussion of support of what's taking place in Israel, that Israel is central to what goes on in our, the concern for Israel is central in our lives. Uh, and therefore, Aliyah, for the younger generation, is central in our lives, is not developed enough to be quite honest. And um, I, I think uh, we can give all kinds of reasons, and there's all kind of economic and social pressure, no question about it, and who am I to talk? I'm, I'm already, uh, I've seen uh, f uh, 50 year, years already, a couple of years ago, so I'm, I'm not a youngster myself, and st I'm still sitting here in Kew Gardens Hills. But as far as whether the this generation, uh, the young generation, 20s and 30s, are putting enough focus on moving to Israel, the answer to it, in short, to, in my opinion, is no. And again, I'm talking about Queens. It could be in Teaneck and something else, maybe. But on Kew Gardens Hills, I don't see that it's brought up enough. And I think, to a large extent, look, parents are always uh, to be the ones who are most responsible to train their kids. But to a large extent, the yeshivas are not emphasizing Jewish Israeli history. Kids today, Orthodox kids today, and some parents tell me that their kids that they send off to learn for a year in yeshiva come back from Israel and they send them off to college. They don't know if they're prepared enough to take on the forces against Israel on the college campus because they are so bombarded with anti-Israel attitudes on the co on the colleges on the campuses and in the yeshivas. And I thought if you put aside the Haredi yeshivas, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in the modern what you would expect to be the modern Zionist type yeshivas, very little emphasis is placed on teaching who is Ben-Gurion, who is Chaim Weizmann, what was the 67 war all about, what was the Yom Kippur war all about, Melchemet HaShichrur, what was the background to that? Kids today don't know, and worse than that, they don't care, I'm afraid. Yes, they'll come out Yom Atzmut, they'll wave a flag, they'll sing, they'll eat falafel, but there's not enough emphasis put on uh, the whole history Jewish history and even Zionist history, there's not enough emphasis placed in the schools. So in my opinion, um, not enough is being discussed as far as Aliyah and, and, uh, and, and, and the support of the idea of Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, to be quite frank. Rabbi Yoel Schoenfeld, thank you very much. And Chag Pesach, Kasher V'Sameach. Yoni, I want to thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to uh, express my feelings to you and, and what Chag Pesach is like here, what our Kehillah is like here. And uh, I want to wish you and all of Am Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, Kal Yisrael, the entire Kehillah of Kal Yisrael, wherever they may be, a Chag Kasher V'Sameach.